So thankfully, our Prime Minister has allowed us to get out of the house so we could shop for the things that we need today. So I am here at the Gladstone Road Farmer's Market. Hey, good morning everybody. Just letting you know, the Gladstone Road Farmer's Market is open and this is Miss Miller, Miss Whitlin Miller. And behind her, y'all see this? Hold on, I'm gonna walk right behind you. You got a social distance, okay? So let me move out your way. Here we go. Look what she got. She got guava, fresh guava. So y'all know we're coming to Bodine Port, right? Hi everyone, I'm Bodine Victoria. Welcome to my kitchen and this is my pot. As you saw, I was able to get to the farmer's market and pick up some fresh guavas. So I will not have a need to use the guava shells in the syrup, I'm a just. Oh, I can show you how to make a slightly traditional guava duff from start to finish. Making guava duff is not hard, it's time consuming. So if somebody makes you guava duff from scratch, please know that they love you and I want you to remember that you really, 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 really need to show your appreciation and pay for great guava duff that's made from scratch. Here's what we're going to do. We are going to make the filling first. We're making the filling first because we need the filling to cool before we add it to the dough. So we're going to make the filling while the filling is cooling, we're going to make the dough. By the time we're finished with the dough, we should be able to use the filling. And then while the dough is steaming or the duff is steaming, we're going to make the duff sauce, okay? So let's get started. Let's start by taking a thin layer of skin off of our fresh guava. Then you're going to take a spoon after you cut it in half and you're going to take all of the seeds out. Put those seeds into a strainer or a sieve and you're going to push all of the pulp out of the seeds. I normally save the seeds, put them in a jar of water and um, later on I can strain them again and have guava lemonade. After you would have peeled and cored your shells, or de-seeded your shells, you're gonna wanna cut them down into small enough pieces. Now that we've cut our guava into chunks like this, we are going to get started with cooking them. So I'm gonna turn the stove on to a little bit of medium heat, and we're going to allow the pot to heat. I'm gonna put just, literally, just a pat of butter into the bottom of this pan, and I know why I'm doing that. I'm also going to give you a closer look at what it looks like as I cook. We're going to now add our guava pieces into the pot. If we look carefully, we can see that it's starting to reduce. Ladies and gentlemen, let's be mindful that the amount of sugar that we add is going to be based on how sweet we need these guavas to be. And different guavas have different tastes. So this is a very tart guava. I'm going to let the simmer uncovered so that more of the moisture can go out. And when I come back, we are going to be making dough. Our guava filling is done. I'm gonna take it off of the stove, put it into the bowl, and I'm going to allow it to cool. Here's what you need to do. While our filling is over here and it is cooling, we're going to get started on our dough. Now, I see a lot of people do something, and I understand that you're just trying to get through it quickly, but here's something that I want us to practice, okay? We're going to break our egg, and we shouldn't be breaking our egg over the same container that we're gonna be cooking in, but let's just hope that no egg shells go in. So this is our one egg. Now you're going to take your sugar, and we're going to add our butter. You can use a regular whisk, but I'm gonna do this number right here. Cleaning your eggs, your butter, and your sugar together gives you a much lighter consistency when you bake your, or you steam your duff. And we're also gonna be using milk instead of cream as, um, I guess, a moisturizing agent. And that's simply because when we add 
well carnation cream for example or sweet cream you are going to get a more dense kind of dove and I prefer the fact that whole milk gives me all of the flavor and still all of the lightness so whichever one you choose is up to you and if you look you're gonna see that this is coming together so now I'm not going to add any more cream. I don't want this to be too dumb. I want it to be light and fluffy, so we're going to add just a little bit of water. And we're going to make this into our dough, okay? Okay, this is essentially what we want, okay? So we want it to look like that. I'm now going to take this out and we're going to knead this into a dough. I hear cooking with my watch and thing on. Hold on one second. Put that over to the side. I love them, but can't be kneading with them things on there. Traditional duff tends to have pieces of the guava through it. Worksheet, worksheet work it and we don't want to overwork it so i'm just going to work it just enough for it to be firm enough for me to take the rolling pin to it i'm just going to try to make this as square as possible this is my rolling pin yeah child i became an adult and so I bought a rolling pin. This is actually starting to rise already and that's great because we are just about ready to put this into the steamer and you wanna kinda of flatten it out as evenly as you can. I actually legit won't taste this, but because I have egg in it, I won't. Man, I still could taste it anyhow. Okay, people, it's time to start rolling. Our Filling is cool. I'm now going to take some and I'm going to put it right on the inside of here. Do this, just like this. And now we are going to roll it. Now, I like for my duff to actually have guava. So you're gonna roll, cover up the little piece, spread it out, this, this could be full of guava. Oops. Spread it out. Look at that. Just guava. Now, you just want to take the ends and you want to make sure that they close. It's time for me to introduce you to my absolute favorite kitchen appliance, okay? It is my slow cooker slash crock pot. So we're gonna take this and we're going to put this on high. And in the crock pot, I currently have two Pyrex dishes. And I'm gonna tell you why. We take the water and we put it into the slow cooker. And again, we want our duff to steam. We don't want it to boil. This is gonna be an interestingly shaped duff to be very honest with you. Um, we're gonna turn it in here like this. Woo! Okay, so I'm here now praying that this come out with sense so I don't have to retape this. But here we go, okay? Let's uh, see what we looking like. Come on. Ooh. Okay, y'all. Ooh, child, yes. So we had a little bit of an accident over on this side, but she looking a little goodish. <laughs> Got all this stuff on my pillowcase. What happened over here was I didn't, <laughs> I didn't leave enough space on the end of the bag for the duff to expand. So look at it, this is what the inside would look like. And this is my duff. I want you to see the consistency of it. It is really, really nice. It's cakey, it's fluffy, it's moist. 
and that's partially due to the butter and the milk that I used and it's light so the flavor of the guava comes all the way through. When I cut this up you won't even know the difference. We've rolled our dough out into two smaller pieces and now we're going to add the filling. Now that's done, I'm actually just going to pinch the sides together, just like this. Okay. I know better than what I did and I still did it, but I'm doing it anyway. And I'm not going to wrap it extremely tight because it's still going to need space to expand. Pinch it, pinch it. Okay. I'm actually going to wrap this one in baking paper or parchment paper. Hold the baby. I'm gonna take this. This. All right. Now, this is our Duff pillowcase. Okay. You're gonna take the pillowcase and you're gonna wrap the duff in it. And just like this. If you have a longer piece of fabric, then what you would do is you would tie it at both ends, but I'm using string because this is what I currently have. Don't play like y'all don't use what y'all have around the house when you don't have something, okay? So I'm buying string just to make duff. Okay, so this one here is the paper. All right, and again, it has space to expand. We're gonna put these in, and I want you to see where the edges are so far, okay? So the duff ends here, you have this amount of space to expand, and it can expand um, up significantly or out to the side, which is what it'll do. So that one is the foil paper. This one here is the wax paper and we're just gonna rest them here. They're gonna be twinsies on top of this. Neither of them is gonna fall because they both have space to expand to the left or the right, okay? And here we go. Here's how I made the guava duff sauce. I cooked the pulp for just a couple of minutes with some lemon juice and some sugar. I didn't add any vanilla. I added a little bit of rum and I let that cook out. Then I let it cool. Then I added some butter. I also added two big heaping cups of powdered sugar to that guava pulp that had been cooked. It was more like a guava syrup. And then I added some more rum just so that we can keep the alcohol content, mixed it together, put it in the fridge, and then I took it out and it was perfect. Now, if you don't want to go through all of that, let me tell you what to do. Get the Glass Kitchen Guava Butter. This will do the exact same thing. There are pieces of guava in this. It's whipped butter. I can tell you it is the perfect accompaniment for your guava duff. Pulled our first loaf out of the crock pot. Look at the steam. So here we have our two guava duff loaves. This one here was wrapped inside the parchment paper and this one here was wrapped inside the foil and I'm gonna cut both of them in half just so that we can see what they, ooh, it's still hot. Look like on the inside. Look at that. Y'all can see the steam rising off of this one. And now we are going to cut into the foil. Oh yes. Cut into it like a burrito. And guess what? The foil one is a little bit more dry on the outside to be very honest with you. Um, and I think it's because of the conduction inside the foil. We have our guava duff. I am so happy and so proud to be able to give now, you I this. know traditionally people like foil, but let me tell y'all, honestly and truly, if you want your duff to stay nice and spongy, I say use the parchment paper or use the baking paper. If your duff ain't cakey, then it ain't saying nothing because I want to say officially, say no to dry duff.
you can make adjustments based on what you like to make this your recipe. Here on Bodine Pot, this is Bodine's recipe. It was a little bit touch and go for a while there, but we got through it. The first stuff was so good. It was so juicy. It was so nice, but it stuck to the cloth and it wasn't pretty. I wanted to make a pretty duff. And so we went right back to the drawing board. We did it again. I got some of your suggestions, got the foil, got the parchment paper, and we have the perfect duff. I am on team parchment paper. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Bodine Pot. If you enjoyed it, please like it, leave me a comment, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell. If you're following me on Instagram, I wanna say thank you all so much for your interactions and for you giving me your advice on Facebook. If you create one of the recipes, be sure to tag me at Bodine Victoria. I would be so very, very happy to see and to share. And I wanna say, guys, this is where it's at. Bahamian desserts made your way, made my way. And because you're sweet and you're juicy, don't let any and everybody dig up in your pot. Okay, so you got this one here. Ooh, monkey foot. Mm-hmm. Let me tell y'all something. This tastes so good. 